This program is supported by Main Street Bookends of Warner. For books, toys, games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art, Main Street Bookends of Warner. Welcome back to Your Yankee Chronicle. I'm the host this week, Abby Peel. The Concord Lake Sunapee Rail Trail keeps chugging along. Let's hear about its latest addition. Hi, Tim. So the, the Friends of the Concord Lake Sunapee Rail Trail is trying to build a 34-mile multi-use trail from Horseshoe Pond in Concord through Hopkinton, Warner, Sutton, Bradford to Newberry Harbor on Lake Sunapee. So it's a very difficult project, uh, lots of private property owners that would have to come on board for us to be successful. But we're having success in getting projects on the ground and we hope you'll follow along with us as we build more and more of this trail. If we get the whole trail done, the good news is a family riding bikes would be able to have ice cream every 45 minutes as you come through another town center. So this trail really would go uh, through all the town centers. It goes right next to the Warner River and parts of the Kentuckook River. It's a beautiful trail, easy to get to uh, from uh, the region and, and e also easy to get to from Boston with the Concord End being only an hour away from downtown Boston. So that's what the overview is on the trail. We work closely with municipal governments, with the Regional Planning Commission, with state government, but it's a privately funded um, trail with donations. We do apply for grants, both public and private, but uh, this is not something that's being done to any of us. It's a gift from all of us to each other. And we typically uh, get the easements in place or permissions in place to go from one street to the next. And then we look at how expensive that project is gonna be, get some of it financed privately, and then announce a project. Because in our mind, when you give us a donation for the trail, the key question is, when can I walk on my money? And so we want you to be able to donate this year, walk on it next year, enjoy it, and maybe you'll come back and donate for a project the following year. An update on the project we have going on in Concord that spans from Fisherville Road to Carter Hill Road. We opened the first piece of that uh, it, right at the beginning of the COVID pandemic in 2020. And then we uh, extended the trail in a second phase uh, that concluded in um, 2021. And we're working on our third phase right now. And that will get the trail uh, about halfway done, the whole segment is two and a half miles long and this will give us a mile and a quarter of completed stone dust. The last half of the trail is going to be funded in part with New Hampshire Community Development Finance Authority tax credits. So if you're a business owner or you know somebody who is, please put them in touch with us. Using New Hampshire tax credits is an incredibly leveraged way to make a donation to the trail um, that causes outsized effects for us that are all positive. So it's a great way to, to um, support a project that you like. Uh, so far, we've been supported by Sugar River Bank, Sullaway and Hollis, and Grapponi Automotive Group. And we encourage other businesses to contact us and learn the magic of tax credits. Thus far, we have projects on the ground in Concord, in Hopkinton, in Warner, and in Bradford. The next project I want to talk about is a project to extend the trail at Bagley Field, that's the town soccer fields in Warner. It's about two miles south of the village of Warner. And that project will extend the existing trail there a half a mile toward the village. It brings you up to about exit eight. This is a project where seven years ago we started to get permission to use the land. It had to be declared surplus and Federal Highway and uh, New Hampshire DOT actually did that 
um, moved the boundary of the interstate, sold some land to the town of Warner, and we now have an easement to build a trail on it. So we've applied for a grant to do that, and that's a really important continuation of an existing piece of trail, and it will end up um, bounding the interstate uh, between exit 8 and the village uh, between easements that we have in hand. So it'll set up a very large project that we'll do down the line at some point to finally make the connection between Bagley and the village, something that the town has wanted for many, many years. Another project that is uh, potentially happening is in Hopkinton to connect the section of trail at the Hopkinton Library over to Kearsarge Ave uh, in downtown Kentuckook. So this isn't a very long section of trail, but it makes a very meaningful connection. If you're a Hopkinton resident, you know that new sidewalks were put in on Kearsarge Ave to make it safer and convenient for the kids at the middle school and high school to reach downtown. This trail would come right in on a municipally owned parcel of land um, on Kearsarge Ave and connect over to a segment of the old railroad grade that was recently donated by uh, TDS Telecom uh, to the town and then connect on to the Houston Fields property. And in this particular request was put in by the town of Hopkinton. They now have a paid staff economic development director on hand that uh, led the uh, grant writing effort there and, and we supported them. So we really thank the town of Hopkinton for signing off on that and their vision and understanding that rail trails do mean business and that this makes a meaningful connection for the town both locally and as we get more trail done regionally. Another trail project that could be flipped up almost at any moment is in the Davisville section of Warner. The current trail in Davisville stops uh, at the beginning of the driveway to Knoxland Equipment and Magtech, uh, right next to Nikom Coatings. And we thank those businesses for their support, which made the trail possible. But we would like to bring that trail up to the edge of 103. And we've had permission to use the edge of the Davisville State Forest for a couple of years now. And um, it could be time to do a section of trail to bring that forward so that more people can discover uh, the rail trail. In Bradford, we continue to look for uh, new projects for the trail. We'd like to put a top coat of stone dust down on the Tilly Wheeler section of the trail and extend that past Church Street to come in at West Main and then continue along the edge of 103 past the Bradford Pines to reach the newly rebuilt covered bridge in Bradford. So I just want to reassure you, if you live in Bradford, know that we are working very hard to get a good project defined and uh, tipped up. And if we have to split that in phases, we will, but um, you're, you're in our thoughts. I'd like to take this moment to mention that we have a unique opportunity for you to remember a loved one or, or make a gift, and that's um, by purchasing a railroad wheel set bench uh, that we would place at a mutually agreed uh, location along the trail. So we've obtained a number of railroad wheels uh, from the railroad and can convert those into long-lasting benches. Today on the trail, you can see two of those in Bradford near Lake Todd, and there's another two in Concord. But we have uh, more available, and so if you'd like to uh, consider a long-lasting, beautiful uh, bench to help us grow the trail, please consider purchasing a railroad wheel set bench. For more information on any of our projects, the two best places to go is our website, which is now clsrt.org, or our Facebook page. So you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash clsrt. We constantly have trail-based events and uh, are announcing new projects and new initiatives. And if you'd like to help us as a volunteer or join the board of directors, 
we're certainly always looking for as much help as we can get. It's a fun group and these are great projects. Thank you, Tim, and all those making this corridor happen. Next week, we'll be right back here at Dolan Real Estate to meet the other half of the force that makes this a real local powerhouse. Tune into our live football game of the week on TDS TV 13 and 1013, NCTV 8, Apple TV, Roku, and at YCNnow.com Friday the 28th at 625 as the Kearsarge Cougars host Epping. On Saturday the 29th at 155 as Newport hosts Raymond. All of our games replayed on Sunday and Monday at noon and 7 p.m. and anytime on demand at YCNnow.com. Tune into our League of Women Voters Forum featuring the candidates for the New Hampshire House from Merrimack District 7 serving New London and Newberry on Tuesday and Wednesday at noon and 7 p.m. November 1st and 2nd. Then get out there and vote on November 8th. Check out the program schedule at YCNnow.com for the most up-to-date information on games, Yankee Chronicle, and specials. Join us again next week at this same time for another round of your Who, What, Where, and When show of the Sunshine Town and Lake Centipede region here at Dolan Real Estate. I'm Abby Peel. Stay safe, everyone. This program is supported by H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Their full-service model offers oil delivery, propane, motor fuels with design, installation, service, and maintenance of all types of oil, gas, and alternative energy systems, as well as air conditioning, water conditioning systems, and backup generators. Their highly trained and friendly staff will assist you throughout the process of buying, installing, and servicing a full line of energy products. H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Echo Communications a digitally integrated commercial printer and mailer located in New London, New Hampshire since 1997 with roots going back much further as the Country Press, AccuMail, and the home of the Kearsarge Shopper. Echo Communications. Main Street Bookends of Warner. For books, toys, games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art. Main Street Bookends of Warner. The Intertown Record, your weekly hometown community newspaper covering the Kearsarge-Sunapee-Sunshine region of New Hampshire. The Intertown Record.